observing reality from which site in the brain. And meditation and other forms of altered states of consciousness, you know, with biofeedback training, uh, drugs, other ways you alter the brain, changes those places where we're observing the brain, in which case we see something different, and basically it means uh, we're actually seeing a different kind of reality. And if you could control, somehow control, where you took resonance in the brain, you could most likely also change your perception of reality, and in fact, the actual reality being experienced. When you talk about if you could control the resonance in the brain, what do you mean by that? And explain what resonance is to our listeners. Resonance is the harmonic relationship of one thing to another. That means that like a standing wave or a sound wave going from like a wave in the ocean going from here to there, the resonance is when it picks up an amplitude increase because it's reinforcing itself back and forth. And a resonance means that there is an equal number of waves that fit in this unit or space. Not that it's half and that the wave is choppy, but that in fact it just perfectly fits. That's what resonance means. Resonance is a type of unit measurement of this to that. Okay. So, you know, you're trying to seek resonance with something, you're in harmony with it because it exactly fits. I have a hunch that the key to opening up new fundings around the world for research and development, for discoveries, for solutions, has critically to do with establishing a resonance system of funding. Well, that means that uh, it, it's uh, reinforcing itself. It is self promoting, if you will. It is self-generating. Self continuing. It is not being diminished by attenuation or absorption, but that it is perfectly fitting to bouncing this wall, bouncing that wall, to the point where there's no energy loss. When you have that, that would be called resonance. You're in, you fit or in, in harmony with the situation. Explain what attenuation is. I think that's very important. Well, that's yeah, attenuation is uh, uh, the loss of something. It's being attenuated or absorbed. Uh, it's a type of friction. It's a type of loss. Uh, attenuation, when you uh, have a signal that's being attenuated through water, it's because the water is absorbing the energy and the signal going through it is becoming less. It's attenuated or, or, or uh, brought or absorbed, if you will. And so the amplitude of the wave begins to diminish like a friction, things slow down, etc. And one point of clarification here for everybody listening, is resonance the same as frequency? No, frequency is your, your uh, actual, how many waves are there in one inch, let's say. That's your frequency. Um, if you had 20 waves, the frequency would be higher than if you had 12 waves. So obviously light is different than sound because of the difference in frequency. It's all electromagnetic radiation, whether you talk about it as sound, light, uh, gamma rays, or you go in the other direction to microwave. Uh, you, you start with infrared, which is heat, you move into sound and then light, and then higher frequencies like microwave. Microwaves have such high frequency of waves between this inch and that inch that they are verging on the level of quantum mechanics and there is very little that can stop or shield or absorb microwaves because they are so fine and so tiny and so many of them in the waves that uh, there's very little defense against something like microwave. Well, there's a lot of microwave stations all over America. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Imagine that. <laughs> what yeah, do we well, do? That's because, yes, that's because it doesn't take much energy to move from this point to that point. And that's because there is very little to attenuate that signal. There's very little that can absorb it. That's what they call uh, microwaves. Those are probably the highest uh, level of 
information that we've ever been able to uh, measure is in the microwave band. In other words, you know, 10 to, well, we're talking about megahertz and gigahertz. That means, you know, 100,000 signals in, in one little inch, that kind of thing. Because there's so much microwave radiation, I was just wondering what your take is on how we may protect ourselves from this level. Yeah, that's a, that's a real common and important question to ask. Um, the one we focus on now is called dosimetry. Dosimetry is the measure of toxicity of a given uh, radiation ba- uh, band. Uh, in microwave, have certain bandwidths, 0.3 to 3 gigahertz, for example, that have ex- explicit effects on the body, whereas at 4 gigahertz, it passes through the body without much damage. 5 megahertz, there's, you know. In other words, there are uh, dosimetry bands of toxicity. They used to call that in the early years when we were doing radiation studies and you were in high-energy physics or something, you had to wear a dosimetry badge or a radiation badge that would measure how much you were exposed to to determine whether or not you needed to cut back, you couldn't go back into that lab for a while, or you were toxic and got exposed to some lethal radiation. Um, when I was a scientist uh, in working in these kinds of fields, we were always concerned about x-rays because you know your body can take only so many of them before it starts to break down. And uh, it became important that in that field of technology, the amplitude, the uh, the amount of radiation was uh, turned uh, was was brought down to you know a place where it wasn't damaging the body. What do you think of these new machines that are being put in airports to X-ray our bodies? I would say that there's no problem anymore than your microwave uh, uh, for doing pizza po- pizza parlor. Um, that bandwidth and the amount of exposure is so nominal as to be insignificant. Um, really? The sun sets off a sunspot. Now you may have some serious problems. And so that's why they say in certain years it's better not to go out into uh, the, 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 the sunlight because there are sunspots right now happening and they're lethal. Of course, some of those can go right through your home, your clothing, your sun, sun shields or screens that you might use, like a butter, a hot, hot knife through butter. It, it, you know, there are very little some can do with microwaves from the sun. When the sun blows off uh, steam like that in the corona, uh, you, you can have some serious problems. We're uh, ranging all over the place here, but that's fine. It's- oh, I just wanted to ask you about x-rays. We were talking about radiation, and I, yes. I wanted to ask you about that. Now, what does entrainment have to do with intuition and quantum physics? Well, that gets back to your concept of resonance. When you entrain the mind or the the brain using brain drivers or other kinds of things, what you're doing is attempting to try to cause the brain to resonate in certain frequencies. The most common one that people would talk about would be things like uh, uh, alpha, uh, where you're trying to go into a light alpha state, which is slightly different than where you are right now in a beta state. In an alpha state, for example, the brain has a certain kind of a frequency band that it will resonate in, in the back part of the occipital region of the cerebral cortex, your visual, your visual range, it would be alpha states are associated with not seeing objects, but just seeing patterns and light, where you're not recognizing them as a, uh, a chair or something like that. It's um, a place that is powerful if you can entrain the brain and train it to be resonating in certain frequencies, you can do tool, You can use that as a tool and uh, be able to do things. We know, for example, that in a theta state, maximum healing occurs. When you're really sick, the best thing to do is you go down into a deep sleep. That's where the body is able to heal itself more quickly. That place is known as theta. That's why you go down there. Uh, you do it instinctively. Imagine being able to do that as a tool. 